is cute, is cuddly, is short, is subversive, is... Vaclav Havel? <laughs> Actually, no, viewers. I was thinking more of that very naughty but very nice, really, Mr. Mark Almond, who's back amongst us with a radiant new album entitled Tenement Symphony. Yes, when Mark's not been abandoning himself to those forbidden pleasures of the night he writes so much about in his lyrics, he's been a busy boy, signing a new record deal and recording songs by Jacques Brel, amongst others. Why? He's even got the great French composer Claude Debussy to rise from the dead and collaborate with him on a couple of the tracks here. At least, that's what the record company told me anyway. Imp of the perverse, king of camp, and heir apparent to the late lamented Freddie Mercury, Mark Almond is all of these things, but more than that, is the featured star of this Rapido report. In the 12 years since he first released a record as part of Soft Cell, Mark Almond has gone through more musical styles than most people listen to in a lifetime. But from synthesizer pop to Vegas cabaret, he's earned a steady reputation as a king of kitsch. I think kitsch is a kind of a very bourgeois word. I, I don't find, you know, I have a different appreciations of what other people may call sort of kitsch or camp or these other words that are sometimes applied to it, you know. I, um, for me, it's just an expression of illusions of uh, or delusions of grandeur. His last album, Tenement Symphony, featured a 70-piece orchestra and saw Mark reunited for some of the songs with his old soft cell partner, Dave Ball. It was literally a record of two sides, a dance side and a dark side. Being unpredictable is something of a Mark Arman trademark. There's a lot of different elements that go up to making, and influences to go up to making what I do, and it's very, very hard to put it into a pigeonhole, you know, uh, and very hard to give it a, um, a label. I mean, my thing comes from more like, say, Music Hall and Vaudeville and Chansonnier than, say, for example, rock and roll. Um, you know, it's kind of taking those elements and putting it to pop music. No pink elephants I'd see Though I'd be drunk as I could be I'd sing that song they sang to me About the time they called me Jackie If I could be Mark Harmon's version of the Jacques Brel song Jackie was his first ever solo top 20 hit, but it's not the first time he's covered the Belgian songs. The Stars We Are, the album of Brel covers he made in 1989, was a much darker interpretation. I, I'd approached Brel when I did the, the Brel album uh, three years ago, whatever it was. I approached Brel in a very, in a personal, very... Um, the, the album was almost like a very, almost like a live cabaret. There was, you know, very minimal amount of instruments. It was very personal, very intense um, album, very dark album. I really wanted to show this time sort of Jacques Brel as the pop song. <laughs> The double-sided nature of Mark Almond is something that he feels has been misinterpreted. The Torment and Toreros album received a chain store ban because of allegedly obscene lyrics. The perverse Prince of Pop does not think, however, that he's sleazy. There's a big celebration of life in, um, in what I do, of all kinds of life. And I don't just mean um, like labels like sleazy or seedy, which are kind of labels that often get applied to the music that I do which is a myth that's been perpetuated by the press throughout the years because, again, they want to give me a label, you know, it's... it's, it's what I do is quite a wider range than, than, than that, you know, it's more of a traditional, traditional thing. The images of early soft cell days when Mark Armand used to come on stage in S&M outfits and a whip are firmly in the past. The only shocking thing about the cabaret glitter of his new single, My Hand Over My Heart, is a sequined shirt he wears in the video. Well, if people get provoked by things, then, then, that, then that's good. But I think once you actually set out to do that and actually make a conscious effort of trying to trying to shock people or trying to be shocking or try it's, I, there's something a bit desperate about that you know I, I think it's nice when you can do something that <clears throat> quite surprising you know surprisingly maybe 
upsets a few people. But I think maybe, you know, I don't know. I've, um, I, I, I don't think I've, I, I've never viewed myself as being particularly, you know, shocking or anything.